Well, it appears that the structural battery pack, the 4680 battery cells coming in the Model Y are somewhat imminent. At least the pieces are starting to come together. So I want to show you some of the updates that we've seen just recently in released Model Y that are out in the public and what we're seeing at Giga Austin that's pointing to potentially a much sooner implementation of 4680 than we possibly expected all this time. Now I do want to point out that there has been a ton of speculation that Giga Austin was going to start production any day now and this has been going on for a while. I was just recently there and after looking at Giga Austin I don't think it's very likely that they're going to start mass volume production anytime in the near future. However in a month I think that it's possible that Giga Austin could start production of the Model Y, but I don't think it's in days. Now that said, we are getting some glimpses of what appear to be some cars that were made in Giga Austin. Now that comes with an asterisk because these cars made in Giga Austin weren't completely made in Giga Austin, but I'll explain more on that later. Now before we dive into all those details, I do want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Omaze. Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating money to chosen charities all across the world. Their sustainable approach to fundraising means that nonprofits can spend less time raising money and instead focusing on serving the needs of their communities. Right now, with Omaze, you can win a 2021 Ford Mach-E GT Performance. Of course, you can be among the first people to own a Mach-E GT Performance here very soon. The new Mach-E GT packs powerful performance and incredible tech. You can get the hair-raising thrill of driving a performance car without the emissions of traditional gas. Of course, the Mach-E has seating for five. It has 480 horsepower, zero to 60 in three and a half seconds, and a full range of 235 miles. Now your entry is going to go to the benefit of the Joey Logano Foundation. The Joey Logano Foundation invests in organizations that offer second chances to children and young adults during times of crisis. They strive to create supportive communities where all children and young adults are able to live with dignity in times of adversity. Using the public platform of motorsports, they raise awareness for young people in crisis and support innovative programs serving vulnerable youth. To potentially win this Ford Mustang Mach-E GT performance, be sure to visit omaze.com forward slash bearded Tesla guy. Now what's really interesting is this week we got a pretty awesome update from flyovers of Giga Austin. And what we did see was nine Model Ys that appear to be brand new made cars possibly there at Giga Austin, all set up. Now all these cars are all in blue or black, and they all have the Gemini wheels. Now what's interesting about this is it would seem that these are potentially made in Giga Austin, but we've been seeing parts coming into Giga Austin through the last few weeks that are definitely pieces and bodies of Model Ys. So I don't think it's likely that these cars were completely made, every part and component, but parts and components were likely shipped from Fremont to this facility to help build these nine cars. Now we've heard that there have been produced cars there for some time and they've been in the facility and these perhaps could be those cars. But what's really interesting, it was just a couple of weeks ago that we saw a full body Model Y being shipped to Giga Austin. In this particular flyover, what's interesting about this body, this is the first one that we've seen that was missing the floor completely. And why is that important? Well, because the 4680 cells are a structural battery pack. Unlike the cars today, which have a battery pack that's bolted on underneath the car, the 4680s will be a part of the body. And this whole bottom of the car, where the floor would normally be, that's where the battery pack is going. Actually, that battery pack is going to house all the access points for the seats and everything that gets bolted on to the inside of the car. So seeing this particular body a few weeks ago points at that is very likely a 4680 structural battery pack Model Y. And we don't know for sure if these other nine cars are as well, but this is a really good indication. We've also seen updates that suggest a pilot line for 4680 battery production has been seen on site at Giga Austin. So there's a lot of things starting to point at, hey, the 4680 cells could be coming online much sooner than we possibly thought. 
and it'll be coming in the form of the Tesla Model Y. Also, there's one other thing that's happened recently that points to 4680s being very likely to be coming in the near future. An update to the owner's manual of the Model 3 and the Model Y do mention the structural battery pack. It's talking about the jack points on the car, but it's already now in the owner's manual, so it's starting to roll out and it's starting to flow through some of the documentation that will need to be in place when the 4680s launch. Now, of course, none of this means it's definitely happening on this date or this many days from now, but all signs continue to point 4680s are coming very soon. Now, some time ago during an update from Elon Musk, he talked about constraints in battery capacity. They only have so many battery cells that they have available to make cars. They would make more cars if they could, but they are constrained on batteries. So with that, there's been a lot of talk about the Cybertruck being delayed and other programs that have been pushed off, including the Roadster, and I think that that continues to be the case. All the work that they're doing at Cato Road, which is where they've been piloting 4680 production, has reportedly been going well, but it is taking them a long time to really get this up to mass production. Elon Musk says that they can make 4680 cells, but it's getting them to mass production that's been the challenge. And that goes with any brand new technology like this. Of course, it's going to take some time to fine tune that to get it to mass production. So it sounds like potentially they have got this somewhat figured out. But even then, there's still a lot of work to be done to get this to some kind of volume that Giga Austin could be spitting out numbers of cars that would make any impact to the bottom line. Now, once we find out that the 4680 cells are in place, we still don't know how to tell if you are going to get the car from Giga Austin or the car from Fremont. And we still don't even know if both will have different battery packs. I think that there's a likely scenario to happen and I think it has to do with the return of a previously discontinued model of the Model Y. I am personally of the belief that once Giga Austin is up and running, they are going to make the long range and perhaps the performance variant there in Giga Austin. I do believe there is a potential that the standard range Model Y could come back and it would come with the LFP battery pack that they are now reportedly installing in the Model 3 standard range. Tesla has been talking about LFP being the battery of choice for standard range variants for some time now and it would make total sense if the existing production capacity at Fremont was dedicated to standard range Model Ys only. There is a lot of infrastructure in place in Fremont to make Model Ys so doing that just for standard range model Ys makes total sense. That way, those of you who are purchasing a new long range model Y or a performance, you don't have to worry about which factory it comes from because there could be differences in the battery cells. The other thing that could happen, Cato Road may be farther along than we actually understand today. So they could be shipping 4680 cells over to Fremont for the long range and performance models in Fremont. And of course, Austin would make its own battery cells. So that's a possibility as well. And I hope that that ends up being the case because then we would still have full capacity and all these cars would be coming out with the same new 4680 battery cells. At the end of the day, we really haven't heard much about the Model 3 being built at Giga Austin. So I think that supports this theory that when the Model 3 gets 4680 cells, where are they gonna get them from? So I think that there is going to be some mix of production, but they're both gonna have the 4680 cells. There's also been some pretty awesome updates that we've been seeing come to North America recently. What we've found over the last year or so is since Giga Shanghai has opened, it seems like that is becoming the proving ground of implementing new stuff in the Model Y and the Model 3. So things like the new interiors, we saw those there in Shanghai first. The AMD processor, we saw that there. Now we are seeing that here in North America, which is awesome news. This AMD processor is a quad core processor and packs a ton of power. Just as an example, one of the test videos that I've seen did show that the China version of YouTube was able to load in 4.18 seconds versus 17.12 seconds, which is significantly faster than the traditional processor that's been in these cars for some time. In addition, we also saw the lithium ion 12 volt battery is now in a number of cars over there. And that appears to be now in cars in North America. Now, I don't know if it's 100% of production yet, but we're starting to get reports from owners taking delivery that are showing they have the AMD processor and that new 12 volt lithium battery. 
That 12 volt lithium battery is actually something really good, really big that's coming to the car. The 12 volt that comes in the car today seems to have hit and miss whether it lasts very long. So this lithium ion version is definitely gonna add to longevity to that 12 volt. Now with that said, of course that AMD processor sounds awesome, but it does come with some drawbacks. So we're seeing reports from people getting contacted by Tesla to let them know it's equipped with the new AMD processor and that that AMD processor will reduce your range. In Australia, it's the equivalent of about 14 miles or just over 3% of range is lost if you do take delivery of the AMD processor. So it is consuming a ton of power, but at 3%, maybe 14 miles, obviously any drop in range is not great, but you're talking about the same kind of difference as going from the Gemini wheels to the induction wheels as an example. So it's not so much that it's gonna make a huge impact, but that screen will be way more responsive and in my opinion, is way worth it. Then finally, we should get a better picture of all these things we're talking about and all the speculation that's going on here in the next earnings call. The next earnings call is scheduled for January 26th and Elon Musk did promise he would provide an updated product roadmap at that earnings call. So it's been a while since we've seen Elon Musk at the earnings call. So when he does come to the earnings calls, it's now with the intent of providing an update on product or innovation that's happening at Tesla. So I'm really excited to see this update because whether it's good news or bad news, we can get through all this speculation that's out there right now. Things like the Cybertruck being canceled or the Cybertruck being delayed so long, we don't really know. And it would be really helpful if Elon would just communicate what those updates are. In addition, these new battery cells, how is Giga Austin coming, and what does the future look like? We're still waiting for quite some time to hear how's the Roadster coming along. So hopefully we'll get answers to some of these questions here next week from Elon Musk. So there you have it. Those are the updates we have right now. Things are looking really good for Giga Austin and certainly for the future of the Tesla Model Y. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.